Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Anushriya and I are the editors in chief with the Law and Other Things blog. Today, we have Abhinav Sekri and Gautam Bhatia joining us for an interview on legal writing and public law scholarship. The rise of legal blogs online that provide substantial editorial support to new writers has led to an influx of law students engaging with and producing new legal scholarship. Both Abhinav and Gautam run two of India's most reputed legal blogs and we are speaking to you about your journeys with legal writing, the challenges you have faced in the process and how the legal writing landscape has changed over the past few years. Uh, so I think both our viewers would be aware of both Gautam and uh, Abhinav. Abhinav has done his LLB from National Law School of India University, Bangalore, where he graduated with honors and completed his LLM from Harvard University. After completing his graduate studies, he returned to India to teach and practice criminal law and procedure. And uh, Abhinav runs this blog called The Proof of Guilt, which uh, discusses issues of Indian criminal law and procedure in a simple and accessible manner to help create awareness uh, yeah. And uh, Gautam also uh, graduated from NLSIU Bangalore in 2011. Then he completed his BCL and MPhil from University of Oxford as a Rhodes Scholar and an LLM from Yale University on Constitutional Law. He has written both fiction and non-fiction books and successfully runs the Indian Constitutional Law and Philosophy blog. So we'll dive right into the interview. And the first question that we have for both um, Gautam and Abhinav is regarding their journal, journeys with legal writing and how they started their blogs and their general association with um, writing and public law scholarship. So over to uh, Abhinav and Gautam. I think I'll let Gautam take the lead on that one because it's a much longer journey for him. So over to you. <laughs> you basically saying I'm older um, and, 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 and aging, but okay. Uh, yeah, I, um, I, I, I used to do a bit of legal writing in college. Um, a couple of, of articles um, back then. There was the India Cop India Cop Law blog, which was the major blog on the scene, and um, they encouraged student submissions. So they submitted a couple of pieces to them. Um, uh, Law and other things also existed, but the, the frequency was a little, um, a little less. So the the main the main blog was the India Cop Law blog, and Spicy IT was sort of just getting off the ground at that time. So they, they did these blogs did exist. Um, as as far as my my own writing goes, I, I began the Indian Constitutional Law and Philosophy blog in 2013 in in summer, and mainly as just a little bit of a hobby project because I was I was in between uh, terms. It was holidays. I was you know looking for something to occupy my mind, and I thought, why not just you know uh, do a bit of exploration of some ideas in constitutional law that have interested me for a while. So I opened the blog with that idea once i opened once i began writing um the uh, the response to it was something i hadn't expected which was you know, a very um very positive response and and people were interested and they were reading and they were talking about the blog so i realized that that this was something that you know could become a sort of a space where you know could demystify legal language um, engage in certain kinds of discussions and just sort of take the conversation forward. Uh, so then it, it transformed over a year and a bit from a blog where I was just sort of putting out my thoughts on things that interested me to sort of a much more organized effort that would you know engage with judgments as they came out, uh, you know, write about contemporary constitutional developments and and so on. Uh, and so sort of over the years, it just um, it just sort of grew from from there. Um, and I think. I mean, the main thing has just been, for me, has been regularity. So um, it's, um, I think it's now been almost 10 years and I think there have been about 850 odd posts. So that comes to something like two a week uh, for around nine and a half years. So that, I think, I think the, the really important thing about both um, your own, um, you know, approach to legal writing and to create a space where the discussion can be continuing and ongoing is consistency and regularity um, in, in the writing and often it's hard because life intervenes but uh, if you can take the time out just manage to do it uh, you know it, it's it's it can be very good uh, so yeah that's in, in a nutshell the the journey i've had i think for me it's a it's a little bit more of a mixed bag because i've had to for more uh, slightly longer than gotham had to balance it with active practice 
so it's origin story wise i guess it's a similar sort of uh, uh, you know history to it where it was especially in criminal law you don't really have anything and in fact it was iclp was like a great uh, you know jumping off point where you'd see that okay you know there is this kind of space that has been there for years now thanks to gotham and you know consti and you then look at law and other things which was there when i was in college but there was nothing really doing anything as far as criminal law and procedure itself is concerned and this was in my first year of practice and for me it was it was always intended to be very practical rather than be something where i can discuss the stuff that i'm reading and i'm finding interesting it was always that in my whatever half a year of practice i'd realized that you know those aphorisms of you have to wipe your slate clean of everything that you've learned in in law school about how actual process is working is true like to a certain extent i mean whatever comment that might be on the state of what we learn in law schools is a separate issue but i did find it true and i found that you know this is a prism from which i am now starting to view things and it may be something that i want to uh, keep doing and in fact it was a mixture of i don't want to become a person who is only looking at it from the practical lens but i also want to keep using you know stuff that i'm finding interesting and how do i blend the two so it was a very selfish endeavor where it was largely to you know write for my own pleasure and to make myself read which is something that honestly and i think gautam will agree with this it's something that becomes very difficult as you keep practicing just the will to read something that is outside of the narrow scope of your brief for pleasure or for just you know interest or just for curiosity even so as more and more time gets consumed by your briefs the you know it becomes harder and harder to do that and so the blog has actually over the years the 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 reason why i started it was this i have also over time gained some amount of regularity in terms of what i'm doing with it but i keep flitting black and forth you know in terms of okay what is it where i am that selfish side of me still sort of kicks in and i'm doing it for my pleasure so i'll randomly start things because i want you know to give myself that reason to okay do this but uh, yeah i mean over time again i think where i am right now actually is i am at a i am at a place where i am struggling with regularity with more and more practice uh, work so inviting people to you know write for the blog and seeing that take off over the last couple of years has been a real blessing where it's been really heartening as well because it's given me the opportunity to engage with a lot more people and it's it's been really rewarding and uh, but at the same time it's a question of you know what is it that you are doing so through that and i think i'm jumping the gun a bit on further parts of this conversation but you then interact and you figure out not only styles in which you are presenting ideas but also the various ways in which people are trying to communicate the similar idea where on the same topic i might get you know something that i might have written in the past and then three four people might over the course of let's say a month or two months write something in on that and you see you know that there's so many various vantage points from which the same issue can be looked at and you know all of that is really rewarding it's 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 a great thing that uh, people are writing so and i mean if the blogs are proving a space for them to keep on writing then so much the better um on that note uh, what do you think are the basic elements one should look into or like when they just start uh, writing so what do you think are the basic elements one should look into while researching and writing or possibly we can start with like just choosing a novel topic or any topic of sorts I'll go first on that. I'll go first on that. So I think one key thing, and I, especially in this conversation, is I think it matters a lot to know who, like in your mind, what are you writing for and what your audience is. So especially for the blog, you have to keep in mind that at least for the idea of the blog, one of the great things about legal writing on blogs or open access spaces is that you reach a far wider audience than you otherwise might have reached by way of you know a journal. and so you have the freedom you know to write it in a much more accessible manner which sometimes is not something that journals are i mean known for because you're you're catering to a very different audience and the depths to which you have to get into the idea is very different and so i think the first thing especially 
if you are considering writing for blogs is to be very clear about where you are writing and what like who is your intended audience and so if you are intending to reach lay persons with that audience you have you have to keep that in mind stylistically and i think that also you know is is a is a choice that then affects all the subsequent choices that you make in terms of the topic of choice in terms of how niche you want to get into a broad based topic like how deep do you go into uh, a specific area or do you want to cover three four issues you know in a scatter shot manner but just sort of giving someone a flavor of okay these are issues that i'm spotting for you to think about rather than a journal article that will explain to you the doctrinal position and then offer your critique of it or even your own models for addressing a problem so for me i think uh, like thinking about where you want to put your piece out is is critical and those Uh, subsequent choices will then get affected by that initial choice uh, a great deal so i yeah that's that's that yeah i think just to refer on that a bit i think that for me at least purpose of these kinds of blogs in my blog abhinav's blog few others is as interventions into ongoing conversations right so um, so you know there is say a judgment of the court or there is a legal issue that is being discussed um and the purpose of the blog is to participate in that conversation deepen it bring more perspectives and you know encourage people to think about the issue from different angles and so on so posts or essays that focus on on doing that for me are the ones that make the best contributions um so I, when i get submissions i there are for example blog posts that go say borkinian analysis of the indian constitution for example right? uh, that is really not suitable for a blog you know a, because a first of all you can't fit in a borkinian analysis of indian constitution in 1200 words and do justice to the topic um, secondly you know these are things that have by now like 30 or 40 years of scholarly pedigree and it's really hard um, as an undergraduate and even as a graduate student to be able to say something interesting uh, with respect to to that and and this is not to you know sort of you know look down on anything because when i was a student i thought that you know i was doing like great blocking analysis of of the indian constitution except that now i know i wasn't because it's it's just the way it is um, you know if 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 there's if there are topics that have been covered over 40 years and you know by scholars across the world then odds on to get to a point where you can say something interesting there you yourself have to have spent like years years in the field uh, so i think that, that those kinds of of topics that so take you know these broad philosophical analyses of you know in my case the constitution um, you know or seek to sort of provide a snapshot of you know an area shed i think those sort of attempt to say something innovative or new that's not necessary and it's it's also pretty much almost impossible in the field um un- until you have sort of mastered the existing literature so well that you know what is new and what isn't and that itself is the product of like at least a decade of of serious reading so i think that th- that temptation is something worth resisting uh, you know and um, and the uh, and if you, if you focus on you know here are the conversations happening right now you know let's sort of intervene let's let's you know contribute to them that that is something quite valuable and you know most of the guest posts in the blog on my blog now are posts of that kind um you know for example the hijab ongoing hijab case is one in which i i have i have received you know so many uh you know high high quality interventions and i published pretty much all of them because you know, they're good um they they take like an existing debate they they intervene they do it well um uh, you know it, it's not they're not revolutionary arguments they're not things that you know are are, are new because because don't need that uh, what you do need is a is a you know demystification and deepening of of the conversation so as long as they're doing that uh, you know i'm very happy to 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 run them and and for that you know discussion to go forward so so i would say that i would say that that you know ask yourself what where the conversation is uh you know and how you can contribute and and just stick like you know uh one facet one aspect of it um, and then write about it. Uh, it, it it that for me is is what blogging is all about um 
Thank you so much for that. So I think a follow-up question to that is when uh, law students are writing, how do you think they can contribute to their legal writing by sort of grounding it in the present context or adding a sociological analysis and then linking it to um, the legal analysis part of it? Um, I mean, I think that there are a couple of things here. One is that there's a lot of scholarship. Um, there's a lot of law and context scholarship that is both India specific um, and you know and global. So in India, if you take any any subject, uh, just just for example, take the hijab case, just to come back to it, right? Um, there is this excellent piece by by Nisha Susan, which I keep citing all the time. Um, I think it was in either News Minute or News Laundry, which was basically sort of a uh, conversations with um, with school going girls about why they wear their job. And what came out of that was, you know, there are like 15, 16 different reasons why someone might want to wear their job on the spectrum of, you know, um, the whole agency compulsion choice spectrum. So it could be a negotiation with your family that wouldn't let you go to school unless you wear their job. It could be an assertion of identity. It could be, you know, a sense of solidarity. So you would find a number of reasons. Uh, and when you read that, you then realize that the courtroom debate over, you know, agency choice and compulsion is impoverished unless you take on board uh, the insights that come from non-legal writing and writing that sets the context. And uh, and so you need to have that in mind to inform the legal arguments you're making. Um, that is is true in a very sort of basic sense. Uh, for uh, for constitutional law, so I would you know, encourage people to to always think about that and to look for look for writing that that deepens that context. Um, it's also true, and I suspect in a slightly different way for, for criminal law, and I think that's where Rabino might want to sort of come in. I I think, and and this is something that you know personally I keep feeling where. So I'm always looking at ICLP getting updated every once in like over half a week. And I'm like, you know, why am I not able to do this? Or why are people not writing? And I mean, there is a big reason for that, which is like the subject matter domain is so different where frankly, you, uh, there is that much to say, but unfortunately, and the, the way in which at least the Indian criminal process works, all that there is to say will largely only revolve around three things. One of them I, like, is arrest, one of them is bail, and the third is going to be, if you are really lucky, some constitutional issue arising out of how some court has interpreted uh, either of those two issues. And so, you know, in terms of, uh, so which is why on the process side of things, unfortunately, there is really little uh, beyond that that is relevant in a in a contemporary sense that you have people engaging with but i have been so surprised by law students writing on other procedural issues that they find interesting so that's that's remarkable for me at least because otherwise i think from a, from a student perspective and i can speak for myself as well you never thought that procedure is where actually you know the fun is you're always more interested in substantive law and like harm principle and how liability definitions of murder, all of those, those are the things that really interested like a, a student is what I felt and I've seen going back as well. Which is where like contributions then come in and what how how like students sort of end up uh, making those contributions. I found that usually it will be an area that they have engaged with in law school, either as virtue of a research subject or something of that nature. And then, you know, the conversation for me, usually the process is that it's a conversation that I have with like someone who's writing that we may need to refine it to make it something that is more palatable as a blog article because usually I'll be on this on that end of the stick that is giving Bhatia the sorry Gotham the the Dorkinian analysis of the constitution where I'll be at that end of the scale as far as you know the the in depth analysis of an issue is concerned. So, but I am not going to be lucky enough for someone to send me something else very soon. And I find the process rewarding where I then engage with, it takes time. It takes around two, three weeks for me, usually because of my own like scheduling hassles. But then you do a back and forth where you try and reduce the, like, you know, the complexity of the argument to get at one facet of the argument. Literally what Gautam was saying that you have to then focus on that one part. 
so in so in essay that you know be giving you everything on indian law everything on comparative law in a critique so i have to then we have to figure out okay what is what is it that you want to deal with most and i try and restrict it to nudges but like sometimes i'm a little keen on one thing being there more than the other so i might just take the liberty of saying you know you may want to do this rather than that and and you then drive that conversation that way but uh, yeah i mean more or less echo exactly what like gautam said on those issues i think all of that is just a little bit harder when you're dealing with like like criminal law because a it's just not that you know it's not that out there as far as the public discourse is concerned barring those two three issues where again the issues are the same it's just that the context keeps changing in fact sometimes it's surprising that the issues are so similar each time that we don't uh, we don't want to acknowledge the similarity often so so i guess that makes my field a little difficult to navigate at times yeah that's about it i think gautam is so you disagree with me on how my field is more difficult to navigate no, sometimes not, not at all not at all i i mean constitutional law is sort of glamorous <laughs> in in ways that criminal law isn't so i i, I you know thank you for saying it i didn't have to say it uh yeah thank you both of you for those answers uh, i think the last question we had for you was that what do you think as legal writing platforms we can do better or just in terms of uh, like what we can do to have like a have diverse voices on our platform so to give more spaces to people i think gautam again you will have to take the lead on that one you are the I mean, so one so one policy I've had for a long time is that in my blog guidelines I say that do not um do not put your institutional affiliations um when you submit a piece um you know because uh, it's basically I copied that bias. from him by the way this <laughs> coming in there like yeah I saw that from him and I copied that from him over time yeah. Yeah, so it's, I mean, it's basic unconscious bias, right? Like, I mean, I, I with the best will in the world, I will definitely, I, I will still get biased, and then I will try and overcompensate. So it'll just be a mess. Um, and yeah, the other thing I do is that, I, so I, I have this thing that you know, I'm not, um, I will not. So even guest posts are just going to be. This is a guest post by X, but just the name, you know. So again, not like this is a guest post by X who is professor. at or like student at or you know advocate at or whatever so like you just you just sort of you know compels people to read the post um on on you know on its own terms um so so that that's the that's the step that i can take as you know an individual blog editor um uh, what you know is is hard to do as an individual editor and what i think is perhaps more doable when sort of blogs are run by Sort of institutions or collectives is to have sort of you know explicit affirmative action policies where you know you you reach out to um, people from um, you know backgrounds where perhaps you know they might not have been the same kind of same sort of opportunities to engage in writing the same kind of encouragement you know just access and so on basic like you know the normal axes of of caste class. gender all ability all those privileges right so that that is much harder to do as an individual editor because like all your time all your spare time is anyway spent on you know responding to submissions editing writing and so on then it's just very hard to then also find the time to to actively um you know be able to affirmatively increase diversity so that's a, that's a failing that that is definitely there and I, i don't know how an individual can can i can i um, can address it uh apart from and this is again one thing that i am sort of careful of is is to is to not let the uh, writing style determine my choice about whether the blog will be accepted or not um you know of course like i i do believe that there is you know there is something called good writing and there is something called bad writing you know there are there are issues of clarity of lucidity of of this level of the sentence um you know that make for good writing and that make for bad writing specifically in non fiction and in law um but i do try and see that if 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 the idea is coming through and the idea is a good one uh, then to try and sort of work with with the author to sort of you know uh, make it clearer uh so yeah so that's the, that's that's something i tend to do and of course if if you have an institution that is running it uh, then you of course you can enter into as, as you told me a few days ago partnerships with 
um, you know, other bodies and sort of have mentorship sessions and, um, you know, have a space, specific space that, that features um, writers who may otherwise have access-based issues. So I think that that's something that uh, definitely collective institutions can do. Um, and I wish it was possible for individuals as well, but right now it's proven to be quite hard, just, just 24 hours in the day. So, yeah. Uh, I think so. Gautam has addressed a lot of the institutional sort of concerns that are there, and I echo his sentiments on all of those. I think in terms of just the writing parts of it, I think, and really this is something, two things that I've, I've grown very biased towards after you know, more time outside of law schools. One is I think actually just... <laughs> You know what? Something actually that Gotham said earlier about how, when you know, even when we were students, we thought that I have made this great contribution in terms of you know giving that working in analysis of the constitution, and I think that's that's a, that's a sense that we get, especially in the model that is predominant in India and let's say the US, where student-run journals are you know the main means of getting publication, and I actually notice it becoming a really toxic environment where student-led reviews are going to be there and uh, like often it'll be students who will be submitting to those and like the manner in which I saw some kinds of critique come about in those peer reviews, peers in this regard being, you know, fellow students was a little surprising where I then thought that, you know, let's not take ourselves that seriously and uh, ultimately take a little step back and realize that there is a lot that is always there to be said in terms of any topic and so that that's you know that that self awareness i thought sometimes becomes lacking because of just how uh, seriously we begin taking ourselves at these uh, student run journals so i thought that you know a, more exposure helps with that and i think unaffiliated legal blogs and ssrn for that matter or you know open access places to write are you know just are giving you an idea of how with what matters is the conversation and the idea and how you're furthering it rather than the the name of the banner on you know where where you might find that idea so so i thought that that that's one thing to be a little more conscious of as to uh, you know be aware of uh, the the writing and also just caveating yourself when you are writing that you are not going to be able to know everything that is written and so assuming a tone that you know assumes that ivory tower oh i have surveyed the land and this is what i have to say after having surveyed everything is not really the tone that we may want to take but it is the tone that we are sometimes trained to take uh, you know unconsciously or maybe a little consciously in law school so i thought that that's that's again something that uh, you may not may not be something that you want to be completely gelled to with for the rest of your uh, whatever time you want to be writing so yeah but i completely agree with uh, gotham's sentiments as far as the institutional issues are concerned and i think as far as possible like just just access and taking care i mean i'm going to say it plainly i i do take a look at you know from where someone has sent it because even though it may not come on the blog i definitely know it from the email as to you know who has sent it and it's not that blind the process so I will take more active interest if it is not, let's say, an NLS or an Alsar or a Jindal for that matter. And if I'm getting a, if I'm getting uh, submissions from elsewhere, so I, I am a little biased towards that. I have to say that. But uh, you know, there's there's only so much that an individual can do uh, on a on a on a blog that does not manage uh, that many posts especially given the the timeline crunches because there are only 24 hours and god i wish that i was not doing as much outside of this as i have to yeah um thank you so much for joining us abhinav and gautam this has been quite an insightful conversation that is definitely going to help our readers and viewers to sort of understand how to go about their legal writing so, yeah, thank you again and hope you have a good weekend. Thank you. No, thank you. Have a thank great you. day. Thank you. Thank you.